is the epitome of guerrilla publicity. She's a walking resource directory, adorable woman, big heart that can give you a lot of great information about shining your light and getting your message out. What I love about Jill is that even though she's a celebrity, she is so approachable, she gives so much content, and she's just the real deal. Jill Lublin is the author of four best-selling books, including Get Noticed, Get Referrals, and co-author of Networking Magic and Guerrilla Publicity. Her latest book, Profit of Kindness, went number one in four categories. Jill is a master strategist on how to position your business for more profitability and visibility in the workplace. She helps authors and aspiring authors get book contracts in the United States and internationally. Jill teaches her popular publicity crash course at both live in-person events in multiple cities and at live webinars. Jill has spoken on five continents to over 100,000 people. She's appeared on stages for Tony Robbins, Lisa Nichols, James Malinchek, Laurel Langmire, CEO Space, T. Harv Ecker, and City Summit. She has been featured in media including ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox affiliates, Women's Day, Forbes Magazine, Selling Power, CEO Magazine, and Ladies Home Journal. Jill's work is endorsed by celebrities like Les Brown, Don Miguel Ruiz, Zig Ziglar, Barbara Corcoran, Joe Theismann, and Glenn Morshauer. Kevin Harrington of TV's Shark Tank said, Jill's strategies and tactics, as well as her ability to deliver simple-to-understand information, are amazing. She's the woman to know. So happy that your relationship with your daughter has improved. morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Dr. Janice Hooker Fortman with Relationship Matters. I hope everyone is doing well on this glorious day. I am doing well. And now you saw that introduction of my guest, Jill Lublin. I'm sorry to say <laughs> that Jill is ill. And um, we're hoping that she heals and that she gets well very, very, very soon. I want all of us really to send out prayers to Jill so um, that she can recover very quickly so that she can um, get back to herself and um, hopefully be able to come on my show. Well, I know she will. I know she will get well soon and I know that um, she'll be able to come on my show. And I played her introduction so that when we do reschedule, you'll be like, oh my God, I saw that and I really want to really uh, speak with Jill and listen to what she has to say. Because although she's doing all kinds of things and I am involved in her publicity challenges and um, 
just uh, invite, we have a relationship and this is relationship matters and every relationship matters. But what we were going to focus on this evening, uh, and I say evening because I'm in Chicago and, and it is evening, was um, her kindness circles. But I want to keep that theme and talk about kindness. Talk about kindness. But before I get into that, you know, I'm getting ready to get on my soapbox. I'll be so happy when I can get off of my soapbox. And you know what my soapbox is? <sighs> it's about getting vaccinated against COVID-19. Here we are with another variant, Omicron. And what I've been reading is that not only Omicron is a variant, but there are variants within Omicron. And now we are back to where we were in the beginning of 2020. As a matter of fact, we're not only back there, but we have, from what I've been reading, surpassed, surpassed what was happening. You know, I feel so sorry for people who have become ill with COVID, especially with the anti-vaxxers. And when they get it, then you hear, oh, I wish I had gotten vaccinated. Uh, one of my, my son uh, teaches in Chicago public schools and most of his students, they're on vacation now, but most of the students in the school are out with COVID. And some of them whose parents were, were anti-vaxxers, uh, one in particular, her, the mom is on a ventilator. I urge you out there who have not gotten their vaccine to get the, get the vaccine. We will not come out of this until the majority of us here in the United States and um, people who are watching abroad, until we get vaccinated. Now here in Chicago, in order to go anywhere in a public place, we have to show our card that we've been vaccinated. And it's going to be a hardship on public establishments, restaurants, and, and other places. So I'm urging you again, I'm urging you, and urge your friends, urge the young people, get vaccinated. Well, let me step down off of my soap box and talk about kindness. I like to talk about random acts of kindness and what we can all do to be kind to someone. So... And I got some comments coming in already, which is great. And the first one was, what about random acts of kindness? So I'm going to just name a few. And the reason why uh, this, this person who sent in this comment, uh, you know, we must be like this. <laughs> because the reason why I wanted to talk about this with Jill, actually, was because my husband called me today and he said, he was at a restaurant and he said, wow, you know what? Something just happened. I'm like, what? I'm thinking, okay, a shooting, you know, I'm, I'm thinking negative. He said, I got ready to pay my bill and the waitress told me someone already paid it. I'm like, what? And so I said, well, you know what that means? That means that, uh, you have to pay it forward. And that's what we did. Uh, we saw a family 
And we asked the waitress for the bill and told her, don't tell them who did it, but, you know, just say Merry Christmas. So that's something that you can do as a, a, a random act of, kind, of kindness. And I want you to give me some random acts of kindness that you think of, that you have done, or that you've thought of doing, or just something that you think people would benefit from. So I'll give you the first one that I thought of. Give a stranger a compliment. You know, you don't know what people are feeling, what people are thinking, but think about this. When someone gives you a compliment, and let's say it's a person that you don't even know, what happens? What happens? You you get a, a feeling, a good feeling, number one, and it puts a smile on your face. So think about that. You can put a smile on someone's face even if you don't know that person, or even if you do know the person, because you can always find something to compliment a person on, no matter what. Oh, that's I love that hat you have on. I love that scarf you have on. Um, just excuse whatever. Oh, if they wear glasses, you know, I really like those uh, eyeglass frames they really compliment your face, you're going to get a smile. You don't know how that can impact a person. The second one was something that I said we did and someone that uh, did something, uh, did this for my husband, which was pay for someone's meal at a restaurant. It could be one person. It could be a family. What the heck? If you think about all the blessings that you have had through the year, if you drink Starbucks and you know how much Starbucks coffee costs and how many have you drank through the years, if you add that up, you probably would be shocked. But Dunkin' Donuts, wherever, wherever you get your coffee, wherever you go out to eat, pay for someone else's meal. You know that's going to put a shock and a smile on their face, number one. And number two, more than likely, they will pay it forward. Another act of kindness I thought of was if you see a senior struggling with groceries. Now, I saw this. Actually, it wasn't you know my own idea <laughs> because I saw it. Uh, it was a commercial on TV. Of course, you know, you would have to approach them um, so that it doesn't seem like you're being aggressive or anything. But if you see them struggling, offer to help. You know, stand back so you're not up on them <laughs> and just offer, you know, do you need help? Now, some of them will say no. You know, if they say no, then it's a no and just say, well, I thought I would help you. I thought I would assist you, you know, because I see that you were struggling. But, you know, uh, you know, have a good day. Call it a day because I know people are kind of like skittish now because of everything is going on. Also, you know, there are a lot of, uh, I guess, senior citizen homes, um, retirement homes. I know it would be difficult now, but... In the future, when we can go into senior citizens' homes, and when I say homes, I mean group homes, and give them a little concert. Now, some of us might say, oh, I can't sing, or I don't play an instrument, or whatever. You can even go in and just read a story, read a good poem, um, uh, read some jokes if you're not a comedian yourself. Read some jokes or a sing along. Of you know, just th that's something that not only will make you feel good, but imagine the seniors, the uh, senior citizens 
that are in these senior citizens uh, buildings and uh, group homes and apartment buildings and so on. And um, I remember when my mom was um, at a, a senior citizens building and they would look forward to people coming in and she would say, oh, um, there, there's this group that's coming in and, and they're going to be singing to us or there's a group that's coming in and they're going to demonstrate this. And so think about that. I know right now, of course, with COVID, we can't do it. But in the future, think about it. Hi, Maxine. And Maxine says, as you know, um, I volunteer at a food pantry. My freezer is full. So sometimes we have to bring food home to keep our numbers up. I give them to my neighbors. They are so thankful. They are so thankful. And of course, it also helps her with her grocery shop. So there's there's a twofold benefit from that. So if you, there are food pantries all over, and I know they all need volunteers. And just think of, even if you're getting the food, and like she said, they have to keep their numbers up. But the fact that she brings the food home that she has to bring home, but that she gives them to her neighbors. So, yes, thank you. Thank you, Maxine. Also, I know we still go out to restaurants. What about leaving your waiter or your waitress uh, a generous tip? A generous tip. Think of how hard they work. Maxine and I are workout buddies and friends, and um, we have a particular waitress who we love because she, that she says, her name, our Lupe, her name is Lupe. Lupe is the type of waitress, and we tell her all the time that she spoiled us because we can be drinking coffee and it might go down just a little bit. And Lupe is right there. Let me give you some more coffee. And uh, she'll watch us. And sometimes we'll get so involved in our conversations <laughs> that, uh, at least me anyway, I'll be talking so much. And she'll come around and she says, I know your coffee's cold. And so then she takes that cup and she gives me a, a fresh cup. And we, I've told her, you have spoiled me. Because when I go out to another restaurant, I'm looking for the same thing. <laughs> and I mean, she is so diligent, not with just us, but we watch her with other people in the restaurant who she's taking care of. And I mean, uh, we love Lupe. We love Lupe. And from time to, and then there's a busboy. His name is Peppy. <laughs> and Peppy, oh, M. Gee, you know, a crumb drops. Here he comes, <laughs> you know, and he even does the same thing. And for both of them, from time to time, we give them a little something extra. And for Lupe, for Christmas, we gave her something big, extra. And the smile that that uh, was on her face, because we have a relationship with her and we know what's going on uh, with a home life and everything. So think about that. Another one is pay for someone's dry cleaning. So you can ask the, the owner. Now I know a lot of times, cause I know my, my, uh, Dry cleaning sometimes would be like a bit much if I take a whole lot at the same time. <laughs> but you can ask the proprietor, um, you know, I want to pay someone's dry cleaning. And, and, you, and maybe you have a particular amount. 
And then you make sure that, of course, that they notate that so that so that that person just think about it if you put something in a dry cleaning and uh you go to pay for it and they say oh it's already been paid for you probably say what well no i didn't prepay and they tell you well no someone paid for your dry cleaning think about that i get a smile pay for someone's morning coffee Maybe um, that person is standing in line next to you and you see that they have coffee, pay for it. One of the things that I used to do from time to time, because someone did it for me, was that when they had people at the toll booth and you pull up to pay your toll and they say, oh, that's already been paid for. You go, what? And then say, okay, well, I'll pay for the person behind me. Put a smile on my face. You know, put a smile on their face. Now, I see something here, but I don't know what it is. So, and I can't pronounce the name. So, if would you explain your last name is Z-H-S-O. Would you explain? what it is that you put into the chat, because I'm not really familiar with that. Please, thank you. Let's see, something else came in. Uh, in your lifetime, so this means, audience, I see quite a few of you out there. In your lifetime, who stands out as showing the most kindness to you? Put it in the chat. Sandy Barnes and it says, I love paying it forward. Sandy, give us just an example of how you paid it forward. Thank you, Sandy. Let's see, who else? I'm getting some comments from a lot of different places. Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Um, Anise says, give extra tips to waitress, waiters as, at, at restaurants, more than expected, yes. And Dominique Rivera says, I love coffee. I feel it connects us. Oh, Anise also said, tell your cashiers at the registers how much you appreciate them because she does. Oh, wow. I never thought of that, Anise. Thank you. Oh, Anise says, shovel your neighbor's snow. That's it's not a lot of snow. <laughs> that's me. But that's great. That's great. Shovel your neighbor's snow. And in the springtime, if you do your own lawn, just go right on to the next person and do their lawn. Or if you have someone who does your lawn and you see a neighbor maybe across the street or down the street and their grass is high, then ask your lawn person, how much would you charge to cut? this person's lawn and pay for it. Have them cut that lawn. It's all kinds of way. Gwendolyn Dunbar. Hi, Gwen. She says, a simple smile, a phone call or compliment can brighten a person's day. Recently, my brother ran into an older lady who was almost in tears because the pace worker refused to help her get her things in the car. He took her home and she literally cried and thanked God for his help. Wow. Wow. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. Thank you, Gwen, for, for giving, giving me that. That's wonderful. That's something that someone else, yeah, can do. I'm getting some more in here and I'll read them as I go along. Oh, and uh, <laughs> what Maxine said, 
She and her grandson did that last winter. They shoveled someone's snow. And then uh, she said, aw, to you, Gwen, <laughs> because that, that's, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm trying to think of, in your lifetime, who stands out showing you the most kindness? Who has, gee, you know, it's so many people that I can think of that have, you know, that have been kind to me, especially if I said something that um, didn't go over well with someone or I said something and I regretted saying it and another person came up to me or that person forgave me. I think forgiveness is probably the ultimate act of kindness. And I'll tell you why I think that later. Sandy Barney Ennis says, I also put Christmas oh, cards in all my neighbor's mailboxes with small presents attached. This year, I put sachet packages in each one. I love that, Sandy. Oh, wow. I love that. My goodness. I love that. I never thought of that. Okay. And Anise Washington again, who, let me tell you about Anise Washington. She is a photographer extraordinaire extraordinaire all you have to do to her is say um i have this coming up and i want to look beautiful or i want to look you know something fun or or and then she'll suggest okay well uh, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? Why don't we do the other? And then what happens is your pictures come out and you say, wow, wow. If you go back on my YouTube channel, Dr. Janice Hooker Fortman, you will see, uh, she was on my show and you will see what an extraordinary photographer she is. Now, anyway, that was a shameless plug <laughs> for Anise. So as she is healing from major sur surgery, and I know we all prayed for you, Anise, and our prayers were answered. Anise says, in my lifetime, the kindest act done for me oh, was a surprise birthday drive by organized by my sister during COVID-19 last year. It was so touching, it made me cry. Wow, Anise, that was great. I was invited and I don't remember why I couldn't make it, but I remember the pictures behind it and uh, afterwards, so wow, 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 wow. Okay. So let's do some more here. Um, oh, all of us are surrounded by schools and you know there are struggling students offer to tutor a struggling student now you can do it virtually you can have them on zoom but you can go to that school to the administrator and you can ask them you know is there a student that I could tutor. And I'm sure they'll give you loads and loads and loads and loads of names because they have loads and loads and loads of students. But that's something also that you can do. That's 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 an act of kindness. And just think of the effect that you would have on that young person's life. Oh, this is a good one. Take time to listen to someone. And in some of my presentations, I've talked about listening because most of us, we don't really listen. And why do I say that? Because we listen 
to respond. We listen to see what is that person saying so I can either answer it or respond some kind of way, give them advice. So when it says take time to listen to someone, really take time to listen, number one, without judgment, number two, without responding, thinking of how you're going to respond. Just listen to what that person has to say. Listen with your ears. Listen with your heart. Listen with your brains, your mind. Listen because, and you know what else? Listen between the lines or, or yeah, between the words, between the sentences. Listen, because a lot of times when we are not really listening to someone, really listening, we misunderstand whatever it is that they're saying. And then we respond so quickly. Or listen and don't turn it back on yourself. Because if someone is really talking to you and, and, and they want you to listen to them, they want you to hear them. So when you, if you're listening a lot of times, and I'm guilty too, we have a tendency to, if they say, well, yeah, um, I really uh, struggled last week with my health. And how do we respond sometimes? Yeah, well, you know, I wasn't feeling so well last week either. Yeah, that's not what they want to hear. And what it shows is that you're really not listening to them. You've turned it back on yourself. So that's just a that's just an example. But think about that. Whenever someone is really telling you anything, do you turn it back to you? Oh, um, I was watching this movie and it really impacted me. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I saw such and such and such a movie and, and yeah, it made me feel like such and such. Ah. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. So take time to listen to someone. Also, buy groceries for the person either in front of you or even behind you. Now, I don't mean, you know, I mean, you can look behind you um, or in front of you or it's sometimes it's difficult to do that. But think about what I did one one time. It was a, a woman in front of me. She had two kids and the one son was a big, tall, strapping boy. And she had bought all these different groceries. And when they rang it up and then she put her debit card in, it wasn't enough. And she started putting stuff back. And the stuff that she was putting back, I'm like, woo, <laughs> you can't put back the bread and the stuff that you're making the sandwiches with and put this back. And, and I thought, you know what? I have a son and I know a big, tall, strapping young man like that needs to eat and i just said no 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 don't put it don't put that back and she said well i said no 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 don't don't put it back and just what i did i didn't pay for everything but the stuff that she was putting back i told the cashier uh whatever that is you know just add that to my bill and i mean the way she looked at me um the mom she, she just like thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. And the young man looked and his eyes just got big, you know, but um, so that's something that you can do. Oops. Uh, let's see. Uh, Maxine says, I chose a little girl at, ch at church to make her a beautiful Christmas. Her parents are struggling, but I love the way they're raising her. Wonderful, Maxine. That's very nice. Oh, and then Gwen says, yes, Gwen, uh, to what I was talking about as far as listening. Listen and not 
judge. You never, oh, uh, what did my husband say to me? Every now and then he says something that's really great. He said, you never know. Oh, it's, it has to do with church. You never know how far people had to come to get here. So think about what that means. It doesn't mean distance. So you think about that. Now, earlier I said, um, what did I say? <laughs> well, anyway, I forgot what I said. After all, you know, uh, when you get to be a certain age, <laughs> you can have a little brain fog. <laughs> I guess I need to take some prepagent. But anyway, <clears throat> the one act of kindness, be kind to your, oh, I know what I talked about. I said forgiveness, forgiveness. I remembered. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. And that means that self-talk that we sometimes do. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, why did I, how, how did I misplace that? Oh, God, I wasn't thinking. Oh, this, be kind to yourself. And forgiveness comes in with that because who is forgiveness for? It's not for that person that you felt, you know, did you wrong or whatever. It's not for that person. It's for you. Be kind to yourself. When I said that's the ultimate kindness, that is the ultimate kindness as far as you are concerned. Be kind to yourself. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that we just... Give me some more in here. Amen, Lori said. <laughs> we've all done things that, that we regret. We've all said things that, oh, God, how did that come out of my mouth? Um, as long as we live, people are going to either say things or do things to you that have to be forgiven. It can be something huge or it can be something small. But don't go through life or even a period of time with that here and 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 with that here be kind to yourself forgive it's not easy i'm working on that myself some of you know me out there know what i'm working on <laughs> and it's not that you will forget it forget it but you have to forgive it because this person, as far as my own personal journey is concerned, I know that that person not thinking at all <laughs> about what they did and how it affected me. So they're tripping and wrong somewhere, but I'm working on it, but I'm trying to be kind to myself. Now, what else did I see? What has been the greatest kindness towards someone that you have witnessed? Maybe that you haven't done, but you've witnessed someone else do. So think about that. I'm trying to think of it myself. <sighs> okay, people, <laughs> while I'm thinking. I'm looking for, let's see. Oh, Lori says something that I had said 
previously, lessons learned and fix them along the way. Yes, Lori. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. So I'm thinking um, what I have witnessed that I thought, oh, wow. That was really kind of them to do that. You know, I didn't witness this personally, but I've seen where someone has taken a coat off of themselves and given it to someone who needed a coat, like a homeless person. Um, I've seen acts of kindness that I've I, I've witnessed myself where this young guy, now I, I did witness this, where this young guy was collecting toiletries for homeless people. And every year um, he would do this. So that I have, I have seen. And the same young man, he found out how you could buy trailer homes, you know, for little or nothing. And he would do like a fundraiser to pay for a trailer home. And then he would go out. Uh, he would solicit like, you know, furniture, like people who, you know, we all have furniture that um, we like, I don't like this anymore. I need to get rid of it or something like that. And he would furnish these um, trailer homes and then he would give them to veterans. And to me, that was, I mean, like veterans, like homeless veterans. So that meant that they could live in this paid for home. And he, and, you know, he would put it on uh, social media and it would show you how the homes were coming along and, and people would donate. And, and in the end, um, he had to find some place to store furniture and stuff. Um, so that, you know, so, um, Yes, so that's what I've seen. Maxine says, uh, buy gas for a person's car, even if it's only $10. Yeah, yeah. You could be standing in line and somebody behind you, you know, in the gas line, and then you say, and they don't even have to know it, and you say, okay, um, this is just my idea of how to do it. Um, okay, so my gas is $20 or $34, whatever it is. Here's my $34. Uh, okay, so this is an extra $10 I'm paying for that person behind me. Great, 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 Maxine. Great, 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 great. Let's see, who else? Lori Whitney says, a new beginning. Yes, Lori. It, it gives... People, new beginnings. Let's see. Um, this Christmas is something else that came in. This Christmas season, we celebrate someone who has shown us the greatest kindness of all in the person of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. For the forgiveness of our sins and to know that he's coming soon. I don't know when, we don't know when, but these are for the Christians out there. I know some of my audience, they're not, but um, I am, and I do believe he is coming, and uh, I'm just thankful he forgives me for my sin. It don't mean that I can just sin, because I know he's going to forgive me, <laughs> but, but the fact that you think about it. Think about this when I'm talking about forgiveness. If he can forgive us, 
But what happened to him? Oh, we can forgive the little stuff compared to that. Uh, what happens to us? As Maxine says, yes, he is the reason for the season. And I think a lot of us forget about that because we start thinking about Brian Gibbs and going to the mall and, and presents and what people are going to give me and what am I going to give everybody else? And we forget about that. That um, Think about it. Why are we giving gifts? Not just because it's Christmas, so to speak, but the gift of giving. Let's see. Um, I have some quotes here. One of them is kindness make kindness makes you the most beautiful person in the world, no matter what you look like. I like that. I like that. Another one is, let's see, who said that one in? Another one is, um, Lori says, I have 15 helpless, homeless, feline critters in need of help for Christmas. Oh, feline critters. I'm smiling because we have a cat. It lives in my house. That's all I can say. It's not really, it was my cat, but she decided that I'm not her person and my husband is her person. You need a cat, Lori. Anyway, <laughs> Lori also says, I sometimes get CRS, can't remember stuff, uh, <laughs> LOL, senior moments. Oh, <laughs> okay, Lori. I'm like, CRS? What? Okay, I know now. <laughs> and then Lori says, yes, she does. She is celebrating Jesus. <laughs> uh, another quote is, kindness is always fashionable and always welcome. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite quote? If you do, send it to me. Also, kindness and politeness are not overrated. And going back to what I said about being kind to yourself, someone else sent in, I've been searching for ways to heal myself. And I found that kindness is the best way. All righty now. All righty. Now I want to ask all of you out there. What are you going to do for someone else in 2022? What are you going to do for someone else? What act of kindness are you going to do for someone else? The same things that you've done, which they're all wonderful, but something different or something to someone different. That gives us something to think about. What do you think? Um, I think you know what I'm going to do. Oh dear. Hmm. I think I'm going to find out when my next door neighbor's birthday is and give her a happy birthday gift. I've never done it. And hopefully it will put a smile on her face. Because I know uh, she takes care of her dad. And um, I think I'll do that. 
I think I'll do that. Well, we're around it. I'm not, I'm not getting anything from people about what you're going to do. What are you going to do different? What act of kindness are you going to do? Actually, you don't have to wait to 2022. We still have quite a few days left before the end of the year. So if you haven't done an act of kindness, here lately, I know all of you who are on here are doing acts of kindness. And Sandy, girl, I wish I had thought about that. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, about putting a, a, a Christmas card in everybody's box with a little something in it. Oh, I uh, uh, another act of kindness that I know I've gotten and Maxine gets. We have a friend who periodically sends us a card and it's like a little inspirational card a greeting card or motivational greeting card and she puts a tea bag in it you know in other words have a cup of tea have a cup and it's always some kind of relaxing tea have a cup of relaxing tea on you yeah yeah we love it we love it well it's about that time. This is my Christmas show. I hope and pray that everyone have a wonderful, joyous Christmas. And Remember the reason for the season, and uh, hopefully some of us can, uh, some of you can, um, you know, be around your family. But if not, and if you plan to say, but just have a joyous, wonderful Christmas. And if I don't see, which I won't see you, I won't see you before New Year's. Next week, I will have an encore show of, and I haven't chosen it yet, but one of my uh, most popular shows, I will do an encore show. And then I will be back live the first Thursday in 2022. A new look. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for this year of tuning in and supporting me i really 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 appreciate it because i consider that an act of kindness so from me and my family from my husband keith you know what keith you could come and say <laughs> he doesn't want to come on <laughs> Just lean your face next to me. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy New Year from Keith Fortman, Janice Fortman, and my son, Kevin. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I hope that, again, we want Jill to heal and um, get well. All righty. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Oh, I forgot to say this. Remember, <laughs> relationships matter. Every relationship matters. Bye.